Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. In the March Madness Tournament this weekend, the Elite Eight bracket was completed. Now the tournament is in the final four. For many of you, what I'm describing right now is like I'm speaking in Sanskrit. I acknowledge that. <laughs> More meaningfully, in our Vedanta and Bhagavata course, we are now in the phase of the final eight classes for this year, but more so the final eight chapters where Sri Krishna is with us. In these final eight chapters, Sri Krishna is frantically teaching Rishi Uddhava about who he is. And then Sri Krishna will no longer be with us and Rishi Uddhava externally. As I was preparing for our class yesterday and the end of our year, I was very emotional. And naturally so, we've all invested years into observing the life and teachings of Sri Krishna. Anyone who would like to join us for these final eight classes and the final eight chapters relating to our Sri Krishna, you can write to our crew for special permission to join this very important part of Srimad Bhagavatam. For all of you who are students of the Bhagavad Gita, the best commentary on the Bhagavad Gita is Srimad Bhagavatam. And just for your reference, from September to December, we will complete the final section of Srimad Bhagavatam. This is 13 chapters. We will complete this over 14 classes. Our net investment in Srimad Bhagavatam then will be 168 hours. That is a really awesome investment. I know Sri Krishna was, is, will be proud of us. And next year, hopefully we'll begin exploring Narada Bhakti Sutras. Continuing with a thought from Srimad Bhagavatam, which I left all of you with from our morning session on Friday. Rishi Uddhava senses that Sri Krishna is leaving. And so Rishi Uddhava asks Sri Krishna if he can come with him. And he says, no. Sri Krishna says, where I am going, even Garuda, which is my vehicle or my attachment, cannot come. Sri Krishna's implication is he's returning to his dhamma or nature, where there is no guna or quality, or rupa or form, or nama or name. Sri Krishna's nature is existence, awareness, and most of all, joy. Rishi Uddhava acknowledges this, and so still wants to come with Sri Krishna. And so Sri Krishna starts to teach him about his dhamma. This is facilitated through knowledge. Knowledge of Sri Krishna's nature, Rishi Uddhava's nature, our nature. Bhagavad Gita has the same focus. Bhagavad Gita's first and final message is one of jnana. Know who you are. And this is so evident with 
all of the chapters are arranged in Tatwamasi. Infinite you are. You have to know this to benefit from this. This morning we will complete 475 verses of Bhagavad Gita. Why is it that we don't feel infinite? It is because we are not ready to know. Our knowing is still extrovert, which means we're not feeling that this is real and personal. A way to be ready to know is shared very strongly in chapter 12, verse 4, where that prefix some is shared. Some means well, or here some can mean that which helps us to be ready. Some niyamya. This is to direct one's body. Another word for this is engage. This should lead to sam buddhaya, which is to direct one's mind. And another word for this, chant. And sam hitaya, which is to direct one's intellect. And another word for this is observe. The more directed you are, the more ready you are to feel what you know. I'm orienting this in one more way. If you engage in some niyamya, you are engaged in your responsibilities. Earlier in Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna had shared, Samatvam Yoga Uchate. Yoga is known as samatva, which means balance. Sambuddhayaha and samatvam yoga, those are equivalent statements. And now rise even, rising even more, in our Upanishad, Brahma, as in infinity, is described as samabrahma, that which is equal. Samhitaya is the same, correct? To treat all beings with equity. Sam leads to samatva, which leads to sama. This is a way to be ready to know. The more sam that we engage in, the more samadhi we experience. Samadhi is when the ego is well placed in the spirit. Sri Krishna shares all of this in verse 5. That it's difficult to place the ego in the spirit. But he does share how this difficulty can be navigated. This is difficult, though. Summarizing this in one more way before Sri Krishna gives more insights into bhakti. The more you raise your identification, the more you deepen your internalization. As long as you feel you're just a body, then infinity will always have a Rupa, a form. Remember how I navigated this, though, or oriented this. Sri Krishna tells Rishyuddhava, you can't come with me as long as you feel you have a Nama Rupa Guna. As long as you feel that you're not infinite, how can you come with me? The same message is being shared in the Bhagavad Gita. In verse 6, Sri Krishna is becoming more clear about his answer. And Sarjana's question is, how do I love you? You as infinity or you as divinity? 
Shri Krishna is sharing, love me, period. But loving me as infinity is difficult. Verse 6. Ye tu sarvani karmani, mai sanyasya matparaha, ananye neva yogena, mam dhyayanda upasate. My sincere appreciation to all of you who are writing joy on Zoom, on Facebook, on Instagram. It is a way of us communing, a way of us not having a virtual relationship, but feeling that these are Sri Krishna's direct words that happened or is happening to be listened to virtually. Ye, the one. Tu, indeed, sarvani karmani, all of their actions. This is the first quarter translation. Sri Krishna's point that he's going to make is the one who directs all of their actions to me, to divinity. And even before I get into that clarity, think of this logically. Sarvani means all, and that means it cannot be a karma. It cannot be a karma. Our actions are determined by our <coughs> identification or ego. And so Sri Krishna sharing here is, for your ego, to remember me, your ego to feel it's an instrument in all actions. So the karma is not important. It is the intention that's important. It's not the action. It's the attitude. Whenever you see this word sarvani karmani, this phrase, please grow out of this notion that it's an action, that it's a ritual. It is a bhava, a feeling. Last night, we drove from Cleveland to Niagara. And we left around 9 p.m. and got here around 1 a.m. And Vyasa went to sleep. Then Shrika went to sleep. Then Sheila went to sleep. <laughs> then Vivek couldn't sleep. And I was just thinking to myself that they're all sleeping so well. Because Vivek is trying to drive safely, that's me doing this for my family, correct? I didn't have to say, look, yaha tu sarvani karmani. Wake up. <laughs> Don't you know what I'm doing for you? <laughs> it's not a karma. It's a bhava. Mayi means in me. If you're in something, you can't forget that something. If you're in a pool, you can't forget water. Sanyasya matparaha. All of your actions are in me. Matparaha. Remembering, I am the end. Sanyasya. And so you keep renouncing that which is lesser, that which is lower. Thinking about this second quarter more, if you're holding on to the higher, then you naturally let go of the lower. See, I've always questioned sannyasya or renunciation. Why does this have to be announced? Why does this have to be a ritual when so much of what we do in life is a natural holding on and a letting go? Climbing shifting from toys to books, and so on. Shared in a more poetic way, I'm sure you've heard this too, that one should keep their head in the mandir and their hands in the market. If your head is in the mandir, it doesn't matter what your hands are doing. Because your attitude is, all of this is being dedicated. Dedicated is another word for bhakti. 
Are we all together? Shall we continue? The third quarter. Ananya eva yogena. This communion, this uniting, is ananya. One is not engaged in any action. One is not living for any other purpose than Sri Krishna. Quite often in Vedanta, in the subjective science, we get trapped in quantity. We get trapped in comparison. Yesterday in Cleveland, we had a full committee meeting. And I asked all of the people in the meeting, how would you rate Cleveland's reached potential over the past eight and a half years? Because now we have our own ashram, so I wanted to check in with them. And they all collectively shared that they feel like Chinmay Mission Cleveland has reached its 50% potential. And they shared that there's so many more in Cleveland that should be benefiting by what's happening. And I shared that the number is actually 67%. Because it would be hypocritical to share that we're focused on quality, yet measuring quantity. Correct? It's hypocritical to focus on a subjective science and then objectify it by comparing. So you think clearly about, is your only purpose Sri Krishna? And I'll even be more specific. What I told all of those committee members is two O's, which is organize and own. Organize means be clear about your purpose with Sanatana Dharma, Vedanta, Chinmay Mission Cleveland. I'm sharing the same with you. Be clear about what the purpose of Bhagavad Gita is, the purpose of Sri Krishna is. And if you are, you will own your responsibilities. You will own your seva. I shared with all of the committee members when we were studying in the Vedanta course, we never had organizational classes. We were only taught about enlightenment. And if one is clear about that, how can you not share that with others in a most effective and efficient way? I feel some of us are approaching Sri Krishna Bhakti from the wrong direction. And it's much harder than when it's trapped. Lots more to share about this. I'm going to pause with the fourth quarter and just summarize that in this verse, Sri Krishna is sharing. Prince Arjuna, who should you love? You should love divinity. Love me with a name and form and qualities. Act for me, feel for me, and so on. From inspiration to application, your application recently was to listen to Troubled Mind by Dan Mangan. How many of you did this? It's a great song, no? There's one lyric that I really like, that my mind gets ahead of me. That's when we feel anxiety of the future or overthink. How do you not let your mind get ahead of you? Unitask. Your application for this morning is, in Bhagavata, we recently studied the teaching that this body is going to turn into food, it's going to turn into seed, it's going to turn into the earth. To care for this body, care for the earth, I'm requesting all of you to register for dedicating to Devi. This is a way of you taking care of yourself, of you taking care of generations. Be part of this challenge. It shouldn't even be a challenge. It should be a lifestyle. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Be safe, be sound, be serene, be joy.